All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about the Baco Laplander versus the Silky Gomboy 210. And I did a video, I did a comparison a couple of years back when I first got the Silky, kind of talking about, you know, which one is better. And it is quite a, I don't want to say controversial issue on YouTube, but there is a lot of people in different camps that think the Silky is better than the Baco, the Baco is more durable than the Silky. So I thought, I've had these guys for a couple of years, you know, sawed quite a few things with them and actually had some practical experience now instead of just having bought a Silky and saying my initial impressions. So I thought I would come back and actually talk about after having used both of these guys now for a couple of years, what I think about them and how they're holding up. So. Now, without any further ado, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, Instagram, all of that fun stuff. It is really appreciated. The sport is very appreciated. Okay, let's jump into it. Okay, so like I said, this is the Silky Gomboy 210, and this one, of course, is the curved blade. And then I have, have the classic Baco Laplander here. So these two are pretty synonymous with bushcrafting and wilderness living as a whole. They're both really solid options. Of course, the Baco has been around for like a million years. Just kidding, probably more like 15 to 20 years. And it is very well established, very well known, and has a great track record for being a durable, reliable, and honestly pretty budget uh, saw. These things usually come in anywhere from $15 to $25. They're really not that badly priced and for the performance that you get it is hard to go wrong with a Baco. So even if I do think that the Silky might be better you're still definitely not going wrong with the Baco Laplander and also it is a pretty attractive looking tool. It's pretty cool, pretty basic and just a very functional piece of equipment. Now, of course, like I said, this is the good old fashioned Gomboy or Silky Gomboy. And this is just the closest model to the Baco Laplander that you can really get. I think you can step down the Gomboy size just a little bit, but realistically speaking, I think the Gomboy is only about an inch and a half, two inches longer. So overall, pretty similar. Now, what do I think in the cutting performance? This is the biggest thing that most people will differentiate between the Gomboy and the Laplander. Silkies really do cut and it's partly because they have longer teeth so there's more of an edge to each tooth so they cut much faster and noticeably better than something like the uh, Baco Laplander. However, one of the downsides, at least one of the stated downsides, is that they are less durable. Now, that's one of the things, one of the big things for me to come to find out, is that I was expecting the Silky to truly be quite weaker. And I think hypothetically, because it does have this little nail nick, if you will, and because the teeth are cut further into the blade, and because the blade is thinner, and the blade is likely harder tempered, this is hypothetically or should hypothetically be a weaker blade more prone to snapping however for me i have actually not found that to be the case and while i would like to say i'm the perfect person when it comes to using saws i'm definitely not so when it comes down to it i have bound this saw quite a few times actually to the point where there is a little bit it might be hard to capture on camera but there is a noticeable kind of uh, bend towards the tip of this saw which definitely uh, irritates me a little bit because I wish I was not that bad but you know uh, it definitely accidents happen and especially with these shorter saws you're more likely to bind them or accidentally pull out just a little too far and then when you go to push back in on wood you end up pushing like this and you know you can uh, bend it however like I said I am happy to report that at least in my mileage and with my experience which is quite a bit uh, I have not been yet able to break snap or in any way you know, permanently damage this blade. Like I said, I have bent it to the point where I had to bend it back straight or reasonably straight, um, but that's honestly a pro because like I've mentioned in other videos, a bent blade is something you can correct. A broken blade is not. So for me, as far as durability goes, the Gomboy has been perfectly fine and the performance is noticeably better than the Baco Laplander. Now, as far as the good old Baco goes, once again, I don't think that the Baco is a bad option by any means. It is about half the price of most of your Silky Gomboys, especially their new like Outback edition. But 
Aside from the price, you do pay for it and the performance. Like I said, you can notice here, I'll try to pull both of these guys out. Uh, you can see here that these two blades are just very different in the way that their uh, teeth are formed. This is very much a pull cut saw with deeper or at least longer teeth that cut very deeply, very quickly. Of course, the curvature of the edge also helps feed wood back into the center of it increasing its abilities to cut even more. So you do get a lot of performance out of the Silky, and that's, I think, really what you're paying for. Also, additionally, this is entirely outside of the blade itself, and maybe the pivot screw is entirely plastic and rubber, whereas the Gomboy, uh, you know, as far as durability goes, or when we're talking about durability, has, of course, a steel blade, steel pivot and pivot screw and all that, but it also has a steel locking mechanism and a steel kind of fore shaft, or at least the forward part of the handle is going to be steel. So it adds some extra durability to the blade that the Baco Laplander does not have. This plastic, once again, is very, uh, I don't want to say weak because it has been strong for me, but it is definitely weaker than steel. So in the end, what do I think about these two? I would still buy both of them in a heartbeat. I think that they're both pretty good, but for me, the Baco Laplander has been serving more and more as a backup tool and honestly spends more time in the truck as kind of my backup survival saw. And the Baco Laplander, so the Baco Laplander has been spending more time in the truck. The Silky Gomboy has been spending more time with me in my kits in my backpack actually seeing more use and i think it will continue to be that way because the gomboy is just simply a better performer than the baco laplander and from my findings i can't see enough lack of quality or lack of durability in the gomboy to justify that being a reasonable excuse to not carry it and not field it so that's just my, been my experience. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I got a really good one. I don't know, but that has been what I have found through my usage and my mileage. As always, your mileage may vary, but that is what I have to say about the Baco Laplander versus the Silky Gomboy. Very similar, but noticeably different in performance.